friend of this district, a friend of God, an enemy of Satan, and a man that I believe has a message from the Lord for this camp meeting, Brother Jeffrey Arnold from Gainesville, Florida. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I greet you in the name of the Lord. I'm so grateful and honored to be here, part of this great camp meeting. And I come to you after prayer, and after feeling what God would have me to say. And uh, I am awed to be your speaker, but I do have a confidence knowing that I cannot speak if the Lord doesn't help me. I've been delivered from ego and pride thus far. And I bring you a word I feel from the Lord. You have your Bibles. I would like to read two portions of Scripture. Matthew chapter 12, verse 25 and 26. So great to be in Louisiana. It's always a wonderful thing to be where you really feel that people love you. And uh, sometimes people don't love you because they misunderstand you. If they understood me better, they would love me. Let me go a little step further. The reason why most people don't love the Lord is because they don't understand it. Everything about God is good and very good. Everything we ever want to be in our lives, He, he epitomizes. He is everything we want to be. Anybody in their right mind would love Him and serve Him, but they just don't understand it. Well, the help of the Lord, for the next few nights, I'm going to take a shot at trying to help you understand it. Matthew 12 and verse 25, And Jesus knew their thoughts, and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. I want you to get the progress in reverse. He is saying, beginning with a kingdom divided, then he steps down to a city divided, then he goes to a house divided, and the bottom line is finally an individual that's divided. But in order to go in reverse, to have a house, a city, or a kingdom, it must start at the individual. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? I'm reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 17. Praise God. John, chapter 17. Verse 9, I pray for them, I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me that they may be one as we are. Verse 18, As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. I'd like to put a commercial in before you're seated. Jesus Christ never prayed for the world, nor did he ever pray for people who sit under false doctrine. He prayed for people who would hear apostolic teaching. He said, I do not pray for the world, but I pray for them that shall believe on me through their ministry. 
People who are sitting outside of apostolic Pentecostal doctrine are not under the canopy of this prayer. Well, that went over like a lead balloon. I'll read it to you again. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also, which shall believe on me through their word. That means then apostolic doctrine is the only true doctrine. It's the only one that has the powerful prayers of Jesus behind it. Here's why he prayed. That they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us. Sounds like plural. It is not. The us is flesh spirit. God is one, not two or three. God is one. That they may be one in us. Flesh spirit. That the world, here's the reason why. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Now I'm going to be real strong, but hold on. The world's revival is waiting on us Pentecostals to get one. I have heard from the Lord. It's in my mind that you guys were talking what you were talking about when I was Go ahead and preach to them, Mark. Talk about it. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one, I in them, thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one. And the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them as thou loved me. There's more in here than we can handle in the next 30 minutes. Father, bless the ministry of the word of the Lord. Help me to do exactly what you want done. These are your great people. I am shown nobody from nowhere. I have no axe to grind. I have no kingdom to protect. I'm saved by the grace of God. I'm honored beyond anything I could ever deserve to be the speaker for this camp. But Lord, help me now to deliver what I have felt so deeply in my spirit you have impressed me and impacted me with. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you. My message tonight shall set the temple for this conference. Not because it's my message, but because of the message. I am to speak to you tonight on the miraculous power of oneness. Hallelujah. I'm sure before I finish, many of you that just applauded will not. For sometimes we respond to things that we don't know beans about. We have the privilege tonight of answering God's prayer. We spent a lifetime wanting Him to answer ours. We've got six nights to answer His. He said, I pray that they may be one. And if they don't get to be one, the world will never believe I'm the answer. All they'll see is the fussing and the cussing in the camp. All they'll see is the division and the dingbats and the derelicts that hide behind the cross. But it is my prayer 
that my people can become one. Because if they become one, the miraculous is a natural offspring of oneness. It is hard for you and I tonight to imagine deity with a dilemma. A God that has all power, all knowledge, all wisdom, knows everything, is everywhere, yet somehow would have a problem. But God has had problems from the beginning, and He's got them tonight. But He's wanting to get rid of them. They're getting old. And I'm going to look you right in the kitchen. The problem ain't the world, and the problem ain't the devil. The problem's us. But if you can hear what I'm trying to tell you tonight, you talk about a miracle camp meeting. Honey, you ain't never spelled the word miracle right. You're talking about a demonstration of the power of God that you don't need anybody to pray for you and anybody to lay hands on you. But if this body of believers can become one and become one, my God, God will put on a demonstration that will blow your socks off. We keep looking for a new program, but it's the old, old story. I pray that they may be one, even as we are one, that the world might know that I'm Him. Now, hear what I'm telling you. I'm not a politician. Couldn't get elected dog catcher. I have no axe to grind. I got money in my pocket. I have, I, I'm not kicked off about nothing. I'm not bent in a shape over nothing. I'm here to tell you what I felt the Lord told me. When I finish, I'm going to go sit down. But I'm here to tell you that I feel so strong that we are on the verge. And I don't want this hype jazz. We are on the verge of entering into the miraculous that we have yearned for and longed for. And the answer has been so simplistic that we have missed it. Now you hear me, when God created this thing and threw that sun out like a boiling ball of butter and hung it out somewhere and told the moon, stay there until I get back to you and sprinkled the old dark sky with stars and spun this earth on an axis and gave us four seasons and set this whole thing in perfect balance and symmetry, the thing that made planet earth a paradise was not the weather nor the ecology. It was the creation was one with the Creator. The only thing that brings hell into your life or mine is division. The only thing that turned the earth into a disaster or a chaotic condition was that his choir director decided to divide his allegiance. And Lucifer insurrected against God and broke the perfect balance of symmetry of oneness. And so now instead of hitting on eight cylinders, she's hitting on about four and a half. And there's a void in God's economy. Now you stay with me. Listen to me. Do you know what was given once Satan fell? The first thing that was experienced was darkness. You know what the first thing comes to you when you finally repent and you come to Jesus Christ? You get light. Friend, I want one that's so bad, I'm fixing to have a running fit, my friend. I'm not talking just about doctrine. There's something bigger than doctrine. We always relegate oneness to doctrine. That is not the full impart of oneness. Oh, Lord Jesus, help us. Hear what I'm telling you? The next thing that came when Satan fell from the glorious bright burning of God's presence was death. Why? Because he is life and he is light. 
And you're not abiding in His light, you abide in darkness. And you're not living in His presence, you live in death. What is the next thing that comes to you and I when we repent and we come to the light? The light produces life. Hear what I'm telling you. I'm not as dumb as I look. The Bible said, God said, let there be light. Light always precedes life. Revelation always precedes regeneration and transformation. Nobody gets born again by accident. Nobody gets redeemed by mistake. There are no spiritual accidents. Everything is on purpose. Now hear what I'm telling you. I'm, I'm trying to be kind. First night. I'm going to do it. Don't worry. When Satan insurrected and brought chaos to the universe, he brought war against that which was right and that which was wrong. He gave birth to disharmony, to division, to darkness, to death. And one more thing he gave birth to. Distance. What does Calvary do for us? It obliterates the distance between God and man. I'm going to be a little strong right now, but you just hang on. Distance is not always a matter of geography. It's a matter of attitude. You can be in this tabernacle and be a million miles away from the presence of God. You can be in the choir and be two million miles away from God. You can be a preacher on a camp meeting and be five million miles away from God. There was no being, according to this Bible, that ran any closer to the throne of God than Lucifer. And there was no creature any further away from the heart of God than Lucifer. We're not careful, we'll end up to be a generation of proximity Pentecostals. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. So what happens? This slime bucket falls out of heaven, he gets kicked out of heaven, brings darkness and distance and death. And what does he do? He comes to sell his goods in the garden of paradise. Why is it a paradise? Because the creatures are one with the Creator. And what does old slime bucket want to do? He wants to interrupt it. How? Bring division. Oh, I'm weighing my words. I just have a natural built-in ugliness. And I'm trying, Elder, I'm trying. He had tranquility. They had peace. They had communication. Why? One with God. On the same wavelength with the Creator. You want a miracle? It ain't saying name it and claim it, doubt and do it out, and all that baloney. That's not the answer. You want a real miracle? All you got to do is get on the same wavelength with the Creator. All you got to do is get in the same attitude, spirit, with the Creator. It is His will to heal. It is His will to forgive. It is His divine my pleasure to baptize this whole conference with the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. You don't have to hide behind not knowing the will of God. I just told you the will of God. Oh boy. Oh Lord Jesus. Oh Lord Jesus. Let me try it again. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. I'm going to say it again. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. There is a danger of you and I being joined to a movement and not to the Lord. Joined to a philosophy or a theology or a standard of dress or living, but not joined to the Lord. 
I take on the whole Louisiana district tonight and tell you right to your kisser, if you will walk with God and have a one spirit in your heart to God, you will never backslide. You will never curse God and walk away from God. You may make some mistakes that you need forgiveness for, but you will not tell Jesus to drop dead and get out of your life. Because if you are one with Him, you have His heart, you have His emotions, you have His desire, you have His yearnings, you have His hopes, you have His dreams. Oh, God. Well, I'm going to say it as nice as I can. Oneness is far more than doctrine. Well, I believe one God. Well, you and the devil are about the same. Don't make no boast. In fact, I'd like to go on something national and tell everybody, hey, you guys don't believe one God, you ought to at least believe what the devil does. He was already there. In fact, this conference right now ought to at least believe what the devils believe. They believe Jesus got enough power to cast them out and make them tremble. My God, you ought to at least tremble at the presence of God. You ought to at least release your faith. The devil released his faith. Don't cast us into the deep. We know you're able. We know you can do it. I wish to God some of us holy rollers had as much faith in Jesus as the devil got. Please, please see that I got to hurry. Listen here. You ever wondered what made Israel so great? What made them so invincible? What made them such a tremendous nationality? Two things. The concept of one God and being joined to that one God. For they had more hell in their life that God permitted when they still had the concept of one God but were not joined to the one God. See, you can be oneness and not be oneness. We have got to be delivered in this camp meeting from trying to separate union of relationship and doctrine of deity. They run together. You can't just say you believe a doctrine, but you don't walk with the deity. That makes us hypocrites. That frustrates the world. That's why the world doesn't know what's going on. The oneness message is the key to the miraculous. Well, I'm sorry. Cheer up here. Listen to me. When Israel embraced more gods, the result was disastrous. Oh, yes. They had talk and no walk. Oh, yes. When idols were brought in, it brought discord and division and defeat. For division always weakens the structure according to Jesus. You ever wondered why Rachel wasn't buried in Machpelah? She was the good looking chick that had the fine face. Leah was kind of the booby prize. Jake didn't think much of her. He was just swept off his feet with old Rach. You ever wondered why he never buried that sweet little darling in Machpelah? Read your Bible. She was an idolater. She was the one that brought the images in the camel furniture. Well, I'm going to go on record tonight. It's still wrong for oneness people to marry out of the church. It's still wrong for us to somehow play around with the world and think we're going to win them. It'll never work, my friend. It took Rachel away from that pillar. Never yeah, work is right. Well, let me get to my sermon here. I'm, I'm getting a little long here. Jesus Christ had problems too. Oh, yeah, he did. 
No problems with devils. You see, Jesus don't have problems with devils, demons, fallen spirits, fallen angels. Call them what you will. He don't have no problem with them because he's number one. You, you know, he don't have no trouble with death because he's life. He don't have trouble with nature. He's creator. But he's got problems with us things. You know why? Because we're the only thing that's like him. A thing that is made in his image, he refuses to dominate. Everything else he dominates with his word. Remember when I told you that conference that time, the reason why God has got so many troubles with human beings is we're the only thing that was not made by the Word. Everything else you made, because the Word is the supreme authority in the spirit world in this world. But He made man out of the dust. And so he can't just speak to him and say, hey, obey. Because he's made this image and he says, I got a will, I ain't going to do it. Now a donkey ain't got that much sense. A donkey will do it. And a dove will do it. And a high ocean will do it. And a lightning will do it. But a dumb man, he won't do it. Now wait a minute, let me just show you what I mean. Jesus had trouble in Nazareth. He couldn't do a lot of miracles there. Not because he was out of juice. And not because it wasn't his will to heal the sick. That's hogwash. He couldn't get anybody on his wavelength. He walks into every service, every city, every individual life, and he's got signals pulsating. And all you've got to do is pick up the signal. It means you might have to adjust your position. It means you might have to leave mom and dad alone and the way you were raised alone and get on the signal because there's life coming out of that signal. There's power coming out of that signal and he wants to help you. Stick the feet. You're going to have to calm yourself here. Jesus Christ had trouble in Gadara. He cast out devils out of the first streaker. Man had a legion in him. And the idiots living in the city were more bent out of shape out of dead pigs than a demon possessed man. We got that spirit. We got people that will spend more energy on material gain than a poor slob that needs God. If some of us people in this movement would get one with God, we disenfranchise ourselves out of all these business deals and all this wheeling and dealing and all this extracurricular stuff. We are racing to rapture. We are racing four and a half, five billion people that are on their way to a devil's hell. You're mediocre tonight. Somebody ought to slap you upside your head. In your head. You know the trouble with the mediocre? They're always at their best. But here I sit, got my hair piled, got my dress and he's a tape to my ankle. Don't do this, don't do that, don't play fuck, fuck, golf, I'm getting little league. Here I am, Jesus. Ignorant! You can't legislate holiness. You can't legislate righteousness. But if you get in the love of God, if the love of God gets in you, He'll put a want to in us. He'll put a desire in us. If we can become one with Him, we will walk in the Spirit. We will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Stick with me a second. Jesus Christ had trouble with Jerusalem. They were the one God people, but they missed the Messiah on the wrong wavelength. Why? Preconceived ideas of, quote, what oneness is. We're one God people. Kill that guy, Jesus. We we'll believe one God. Kill that God, Jesus. Go down to Capernaum. Don't kill Jesus. Ignore him. We're the one God people. How do we live?
Well, sorry, Bishop, first night. I want to know what you other 2,000 people are here for tonight. I've watched during the whole service. Your impersonation of a mannequin is tremendous. Oh, I only worship when something moves me. I go home. My friend of Bible said, make a joyful noise. Make a joyful noise. You got to just make a joyful noise. You can't wait for the Holy Ghost to move you. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving. Into His courts with praise. Be thankful and bless His name. Get one with Him. It's the division that causes the distance and the darkness and the death. in a great camp meeting got your mind on changing the oil in your car got your mind on leaving got your mind on criticizing me waiting for somebody to sing your special song ignorant if he doesn't move one time in this service I am under scriptural obligation to clap my hands to bless the Lord at all times, to exalt Him, to have His praise in my mouth. You ain't got to, please be seated, you ain't got to feel these. Say, oh, I got, I, I got, I got to feel some. I won't be a hypocrite. You already are. Well, I, I, I don't want to juke around a little. I, 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 I might do it in the flesh. Let me tell you something, flesh. Listen to me. You have scriptural commandment to clap your hands. You don't have to wait to feel beans. You're commanded to clap your hands. You don't have to wait to feel the Holy Ghost to raise your hands. You have scriptural promise and commandment. Lift your hands in the sanctuary. Watch out, I'm fixing to hurt you now. You have scriptural command. Psalms 148. You ought to bless and exalt the name of the Lord in the dance. I don't need to feel nothing. I have scripture for it. And I'm going to be one day. Come on, kill your pride. Kill your pride. Kill your pride. Kill your pride. We want a camp meeting. Pride's got to go. Pride's got to go. Pride's got to go. We got to put pride. Under our feet. Not much pride involved in this. Or this. But a whole bunch above the ankle. Please be seated. I'm trying to get them a sermon here. You hear what I'm telling you? Jesus Christ had trouble. Sure did. We're not on virgin territory tonight because we're getting our brains knocked out by a bunch of nincompoops. Don't worry about that. It's not a dirty word either. Jesus Christ had trouble with James and John. Sons of thunder all the time trying to bring fire down and bump people off. That was the one God people. Who call fire down? Why? Disagree with them dudes. Jesus Christ had trouble with his own disciples. They come up to him one day and said, Hey, we caught a guy down the street casting out devils in your name, but we put a stop to that. 
They ain't oneness. We're oneness. Well, why ain't you doing it? We're too busy protecting the doctrine. I'm going to tell you right to your face, Louisiana. God doesn't need our help to protect the doctrine. It is forever settled in heaven. What God wants us to do is demonstrate the doctrine. Not protect it, demonstrate. Oh, Lord Jesus. Please, just another few minutes here. And I'll quit. I'm not done by long shot. I'll just quit. They brought children to Jesus Christ, to the oneness people, and they turned them away. Watch me now. You can have proper doctrine and no relationship. Jesus Christ even had trouble with his right hand man who was going to have a Pentecost preacher. He gets that dude in the garden, he's cut people's ears off. He's one that one God preaches. I'm going to save you from Calvary, Jesus, and let everybody go to hell. Well, I'm going to make a confession. I found some of Simon Peter's spirit in my heart, and it made me sick at myself. Instead of praying for people and trying to help people, I find myself attacking them and angry with them because they don't embrace my Lord and Savior. That is the wrong spirit, my friend. We are to demonstrate our oneness with God so that the miraculous power of love and understanding can put a display onto the world so the world can see we are His people. We don't need to go around damning and debating everybody who doesn't believe. Jesus didn't damn and debate you and I when we were whoremongers and drunks and liars. He just came to us in love and forgave us and gave us chance to grow and gave us chance to change. Why can't we extend the same to others? Can I, can I, can I? I'm, I don't know, I don't know what you guys are doing, but be ready. I know you can, I don't like this. I don't mean to be unkind. I just I just don't like that immobile jazz for Jesus. You don't need to take notes, buy the tape. could put this thing together. If God in His great grace and mercy could make this whole platform and the pews one, there could be nothing to stop the reign of the Holy Ghost. Do you understand, ladies and gentlemen, that the only will that has power against divine will is not satanic will. It is human will. God speaks to devils and they shut up. God speaks to men and they reason. Uh -oh. oh boy. I got it. I'm telling you the truth. A house divided against itself cannot stand. A kingdom, a city, a house, an individual. Reverse it. Reverse it. It starts with the individual and affects what? The home, the city, the kingdom. Where's all this hell and division coming from in our church? Check the individual. We're the bottom line. Are you ready to read for me, Brother Anthony Mangan? I've asked Brother Mangan to read if you'll give me just a few more minutes. I just, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, please, please, I'm not in this gymnastics for Jesus jazz. you got much greater preachers than me that can feel this talk. But they asked me, and I prayed, and this is what the Lord was dealing with me all the hours I flew on the plane today. Tell my people that the miracle revival that won't ring 
is that my people would become one. And I realize we can just kind of preach oneness and everybody is dead and he'll start juking around and jumping and spitting and banging into the walls. That's not what we're talking about. See, we're always separating deity from doctrine. That's tragic. That's why we can say we're oneness people and won't we'll talk to the church across town. I love you, but I don't like you. Well, that was all nine of you. Well, he's just not straight. Well, since when did God die and leave you in charge? God, we're raising a generation of Pentecostal fruit inspectors. I'm going to check your sideburns. I'm going to check your dress. I'm going to check the... I'm going to check the... I'm, well, I don't allow that in my church. Fine. God, leave the other guy alone. If he wants to do it, let him alone. What, what are you losing sleep over, you jerk? You're acting like you was called to be his pastor, too. Now you just you just do all you want right in the office and say, Oh God, this is gonna be hell on earth for five nights. But we wanna bang around into the walls and run the aisles and spit and slobber and talk in tongues like a Chinese laundry and go home unchanged. We are in a crisis, my friend. If we don't hurry up and break through this thing, we're going to keep walking around in this wilderness merry-go-round, and we're going to have conference at the conference and meeting at the meeting, and we'll be a bunch of frustrated dinghies. Now watch this. Just, just stick with these a few minutes. I realize this ain't much of a sermon, kind of a Bible study here, but just, just listen to this. First Samuel 14, 6 and 7. I need a refill here, Doc. And Jonathan said to the young man, listen to this. And Jonathan said to the young man yeah. that bear his armor. Bear his armor. Come and let us go over into the garrison of these uncircumcised. Thank you. It may be that the Lord will work for us, but there is no restraint to the Lord to save by many or by few. Now, 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 now Jonathan has got this spiritual adventure on him. Attack! Now you have to appreciate what I just said. There's only two of them. And he's going, attack! Now I'm going to tell you something I bet you didn't know. Only one of them's got a sword. You read it, the chapter before, the Bible said when they got ready to go to war, only two swords were found in Israel. One with Saul and one with Jonathan. He's asking the armor bearer to go up with no, 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 no sword. The dude without the sword's got a better chance of not coming home. Well, I'm going to just draw an analogy here. Could it be that the Spirit of our great God is asking some of us who do not possess the talents or the abilities of others to be willing to just join the team anyway, and if we get bumped off, we just get bumped off. Well, the Bible says he is the armor bearer. You know what that means? He's got the shield. One's got the sword of the spirit, the other's got the shield. You know what that means? Come here, uh, uh, Brother Mangan, you're my buddy. What's this? You got the shield, I got the sword. Now here's what you do, you turn this way. You cover my back, I'll cover you up. You just keep fighting with the shield until I can get there. I won't let nobody stick you. No. I don't I don't think you're inferior because you happen to have something different than I have. Right. You're not a second rate preacher because your church is a little smaller or you don't preach or sing as great. You just keep watching my back. Did you hear me? There are no 
little guys and big guys in this thing. We are all in this battle together, and we better cover each other's back. And we better make sure if we've got the shield of faith, use it. And if we've got the sword of the spirit, use it. And stop griping and sucking our thumbs because we don't have a ministry somebody else has. Sit down a second, please. Now just watch it. I don't mean to do that with you, Bishop, but watch it. Now, buddy, you just make sure you feel my back, Donna. You talk about one. You think I'm kidding you? You think I made this story up? Watch this. God showed this to me. I didn't steal it. Didn't get it off a tape. Didn't read it in a dead man's book. Listen to me. Read it. No. Mama Bear said unto him, Yeah. Do all that is in thy heart, that Mama Bear, to turn thee. Watch this. Behold, I am with thee according to thy heart. Yeah. Me, me and you is one. You do that, too. Now you hear me? The Mama Bearer who's got the worst chance, yeah. says, whatever you want to do, John, baby, I'm with you. With you. Whatever in your heart, do it. it's in my heart, too. Right. We're oneness. One. Yeah. Right. We're not just oneness in doctrine. We're oneness in battle. battle. We're oneness in struggle. And if need be, we'll die together. The only thing ought to separate us, Bishop Kenny, is death, adversity, struggle, preachers, opinions, that's a bunch of hogwash. Nothing should be able to separate us except death itself. Stay with me now. I'll get to my sermon in a second. Read for me verse 12, Reverend. And the men of the garrison answered Jonathan and his armor bearer. Come on up here. And said, Come on up to us. We will show you a thing. Yeah. And Jonathan said unto his armor bearer, This is so neat. Come up after me, for the Lord hath delivered them into the hand of Israel. Stop. Revelation, Reverend Lumpkin. For me. I got a small brain. But it was a big explosion that night. Watch what the man just said. He's sacrificing his life endangering his walk, taking another man with him. All they got is one sword, one shield. When the guy gives him the signal, which was the token, that God had delivered him into his hands, watch what he says. The one thing that is absent from us. The Lord has delivered them, not into my hands, into Israel's hands. Come on, let it sink. You know what he just said? We're doing the fighting, but they're going to enjoy the victory. He didn't look. The Lord was his. He said, God has used me as a tool to bless my people. we got to stop buying for getting our picture taken. He said, the Lord's delivered him into Israel's hand. You represent something bigger than just your little individual self. Read for me, Reverend. I'm almost done. And that first slaughter which Jonathan and his armor bearer made was about 20 men. They killed 20 guys. Two guys. One sword, one shield, and lost the faith. Read. Within, as it were, half an acre of land which a yoke of oxen might plow. What shall read on? And there was trembling in the host, <laughs> in the field, yeah. and among all the people. Brother Barnes, the thing you've been praying for, if we can get to be one, God will use our oneness to begin to shape nature. For their oneness shook the earth in the host. Read on. In the field, and among all the people, the garrison and the sparrers, they also trembled. Did you hear and me? the earthquake. So it was a very great 
trembling. Well, I heard a story like that about Acts 16, about two guys had their heads beat in in a prison, but they were singing the same song, worshiping the same God, and all of a sudden there come a mighty shaking, and the whole prison was shaking, and everybody got set free. Why? There is a miraculous power when the people of God decide to embrace oneness. Not just in doctrine, but in lifestyle. I ain't done yet. Read on, Doc. And the watchman of Saul in Gibeah of Benjamin, he looked. Watch this. And behold, the multitude melted away. You know what that means? Melted away. God turns up the heat. Melted away. These, these enemies that were going to eat you and chop you up and huff and puff and blow your house down. Two of you decided to agree to become one with each other. And you know what happened? Your oneness started melting them away. We need our enemies to get melted away so that fear would leave us. Boy, this ain't doing for you what it did for me. And they went on beating down one another. That's what I've been living for in Jesus' name. And I could become one with you in the spirit and unity and relationship of my brother in Christ and my God in the heavens. And by doing that, my enemies would turn on themselves. Bishop, we waste so much time fighting the enemy. Why don't you let them punch each other? Am I making sense or am I talking in Chinese here? I want you, Anthony, they didn't hear you. you got to read that again, please. They, they missed it. Someone, they were watching a movie. And the watchman of saw in Gibeah, Benjamin, looked, yeah. and behold, the multitude melted away, and they went beating down one another. <laughs> these, these two guys are one. Yeah. We're one. That's right. Look what's happening to the enemy. Enemy, I'm not going to fight you. My God will take care of you because I'm one. I'm going to be one. Why? I want Jesus' prayer answered in my life. Father, I pray that they may be one even as we are one. Fresh spirit. Okay, five minutes. Five minutes, please. Now I'll go home. I'm going home. I ain't done yet. Read. And Saul and all the people that were with him yeah. assembled themselves and they came to the battle. Point number one. If God can get two people to decide to become one in the battle, it becomes a catalyst to get the people uninvolved involved. Did you hear me? Am I talking in English? Did you get it? It said these two guys were so bound in oneness that Saul and all the army that wasn't involved with the fight saw the fight and come running to get involved. You got people in your church uninvolved, maybe you're divided. All right, I'm going to finish right now. We'll go home. Read, it, it, it'll, it'll get better here in a second. All and all his crew came to battle, and behold, every man's sword was against his fellow. Oh, they were having themselves a knockdown drag out of And there was a very great discomfiture. <laughs> discomfiture. Yeah. I'm laughing at you. I know. Well, over the Hebrews, watch this. Here we go. Revelation, Billy Cole. Revelation. Didn't steal it from a book. Didn't hear it on tape. Revelation. I'm not smart enough to see this kind of stuff. Read. Moreover, the Hebrews that were with the Philistines, backsliders! What happened to the backsliders? Before that time, which went up with them into the camp from the country round about, 
Even they also turned to be with the Israelites Whoa. that were with Saul and Jonathan. You want a revival of the backslider? I'll tell you what to do. Let's get one in this camp. And those that have joined the Philistines are going to come back to the house of the Lord. doesn't need a special revival, a special service. He just needs the church to become one with each other and one with God. And God will draw him back. Would you remain standing? I have one last point. Excuse me for being so long. Watch this last Likewise, all the men of Israel, watch this, which had hid themselves in the Mount of Ephraim, when they heard that the Philistines fled, even they also followed hard after them in the battle. What am I just saying as I close? The last group of people that will experience this revival are those who are full of fear now. For fear is a tormenting monarch that holds people against their will. But if the church can become one if we can become one with each other and one with God there will be such a flow of love and faith come out of us that the people who are held in bondage of fear peer pressure economic pressure marital pressure all kinds of pressure when they see the oneness flowing in and out of us that faith will reach out and break the shackles of their fear and bid them come home I'm quitting and I'm not done, but I'm quitting. There's been enough preach for you now. Now we need to know. First night. Decade of destiny. Oh, miraculous power of oneness. Why did Jesus do the things he did? It wasn't because he was some nifty man that happened to have his dad inside of him. Oh no, 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 no. He did the things he did because there were no divisions in him. He said, the prince of this world cometh has nothing in me. There's no beachhead, there's no area of division that caused distance, death, or darkness. He can't grab a hold of nothing. I and my father are one. I'd like for us to lift our hands and begin to pray now that God would baptize us with the answer to his prayer. He prayed for us 2,000 years ago. Father, I pray that my people will be one, even as we are one. I'm in you, and you're in me, and I'll be in them. Break down the barriers of division right now. The distances that separate us from loving and caring and apologizing and extending empathy and sympathy and mercy. Jesus Christ, help us now. Come on, don't stop now. Don't stop now. It's got to happen tonight. We've got to somehow enter into that place of being one with God and one with each other. The head and the body must be one if anything supernatural is going to be accomplished. Without me, you can do nothing, Jesus said. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Shalabahata. Ikata lobo sakarabah. Sondo rienda lobo shoto rabai. Jesus. I'm done.
done what I thought you told me to do. Jesus, we yearning for the revival you want to give to us. The backslider that awaits our oneness. The sinner that's captured by fear of sin that needs somehow a demonstration of our oneness with you and with each other. Now, Lord, now, Lord, move among us. 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 Move. Move. Move among us. We rejoice in the scripture every time we quote Acts 2.38 and we quote Acts 2.1 and 4. But I wonder if we understand what it really said. And when the day of Pentecost has fully come, and they were all in one place, in one mind, one accord, suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. Listen to this. And it filled the house before it filled the people. Let me try it again. It filled the house before it filled the people. Let me try it one last time. It filled the house before it filled the people. That means we've got to create the atmosphere right now for him to charge the atmosphere. And once the atmosphere is charged, it's a small thing for the people to be endued. Come on, one more try. One more effort to get your spirit, your thoughts, your emotions in union with him. You're worshiping God. You're next to somebody. Grab a hold of them right now. Embrace them right now. Come on. Let it flow through you right now. Ha. Come on. Embrace. Come in! Here it comes! It's 